Hey guys, welcome back. This video is going to start covering the beginning parts of the aldehydes and ketones part of the class. And so it's going to be just a basic introduction into these functional groups and into some uh, reaction that creates a product called a hydrate. All right, so let's get into it. So you guys know from Orgo 1 how carbocation stability works, right? Where we can have certain carbocations that are more stable than others. So one example would be having a primary carbocation, and here is a secondary and a tertiary, right? And you know that tertiary is more stable than secondary, which is more stable than primary. Why? Carbocations have these positive charges. Positive charge means they're electron deficient. They want more electrons, but they don't have any. But the good thing is these alkyl groups, carbon chains, such as that carbon, these two, and these three, right? These alkyl groups are electron donating groups, which I'll just abbreviate as EDGs. All right, so they have electrons that this positive charge wants, and so it can donate some positive, some electrons into this plus charge to stabilize it. Because tertiary carbocations have three carbons, it can donate more and stabilize that plus charge more than let's say a primary can, okay? And so this is an important topic, uh, an important concept when it comes to these aldehydes and ketones, um, because we need to be able to talk about their stability Right, so what makes some more stable than another? So a similar example would be something like this. Here is an aldehyde. Right, aldehydes are carbons double bonded to an oxygen, and they usually have 1H. And we compare it to something like this. and compared to something like that. These two are aldehydes. They have at least one H coming directly off the carbon with a double bonded O. And this is a ketone. It's got two carbon or two alkyl groups directly connected to that carbon double bonded to an oxygen. What's more stable? Which of these three is the most stable? So similar to Carbocations, carbonyl carbons, which I'll do with color in blue, are also electron deficient. If we drew a resonance structure, I can raise that double bond up. And I have now an O minus and a plus charge. And so because in a resonance structure, we have this plus charge in a carbon, and we can draw similar resonance structures for all of these. This carbon here has a partial positive. It's a little bit um, more deficient in electrons than a normal carbon. All right, and so to show that, I'm gonna put this little positive sign there. And same for all of these. And so if we drew the resonance structure for all of them, you would get something that looks like this. Very similar for all three. And so how do we figure out what's more stable? Well, just like in carbocations, alkyl groups donate electrons. They can stabilize something with a positive or partial positive. This only has hydrogens, this aldehyde. So there's not much, um, there's no stabilizing effect happening here. Now we have one methyl, and that one methyl can donate some electrons to that positive, making it more stable than this. And this last one, this ketone, has two methyls. And so it can stabilize that positive charge even more. And so what is this telling us? It's telling us that these carbonyls are stabilized by these alkyl groups. This is the most stable because it's got two electron donating groups. This is the least 
stable because it's got zero donating groups. Hydrogens don't really donate much. All right. Um, and so this brings us to our first reaction. This reaction called a, so basically it's called a hydration reaction, the addition of a water. All right, how does this work? So let's try it out. So here's our carbonyl. And notice that I'm putting R here. The R can be hydrogens or carbons in this case. This works on ketones and aldehydes. Okay, so I'm not going to specify here. They both they work on both of them. And what we are going to react it with is an H plus, some sort of acid, with water. Okay, so this acid could be something totally different. It could be H2SO4, but as long as we have some sort of thing, something that donates a proton and H plus and water, we're good to go. So what happens? All right, that double bond that we see here right there is going to grab one of these H's, all right? Uh, you'll either see it either with the double bond grabbing or with the oxygen grabbing. Because the oxygen is a little bit more common, I want to show it with that. So that oxygen uses one of its lone pairs to grab that H+. Plus. Okay? And so what we're going to get is this. Got a plus charge on it now and an H. All right. And now what's going to happen is our water, a water molecule, can come in. So here's our water. All right. And it's going to attack that carbon. It's going to attack our carbonyl carbon. Let me draw it out more. So the oxygen attacks that carbon, and our double bond gets kicked up. So now we have a water plus charge and an alcohol. All right. All that happens now is that is one of these hydrogens is just going to get lost. You could show water grabbing it, but as long as you show this, that's okay. Oh, and I missed the R group. But the important part is that we have two alcohols on the same carbon. So they're sharing that carbon in blue. And what that's called is it's called a gem dial. All right, that's a name you could uh, hear it called, um, or just in general, a hydrate. So if you hear any of these two, it's referring to this sort of structure. And remember, these R's can be H's or carbon groups. All right, so hopefully that mechanism wasn't too bad. And so what does that tell us, right? So common things you'll be you'll see that are asked with this sort of reaction is how likely the reaction is willing to happen. So let's look at three cases. Our aldehyde that we used here, reacting with H plus, H2O, and this would be our product. Our second structure is going to be this. And again, our product is basically just going to be looking at this carbon, turning the double bonded O into an OH, and adding another OH. So it's a little shortcut. But nothing happens to those groups attached to that carbonyl carbon. So those should not be changed. And our last thing that we're going to look at is this one.
So here are our three reactions. We're going to try to figure out which one is most likely to happen. All right, this is just one example of this hydration reaction. Um, but in general, it just um, allows us to introduce this sort of mechanism for a future reaction that's going to be more common for you. But this can definitely show up on a test, so be ready for that. So which of these three reactions is more likely to happen? All right, so think of this logic. The more stable your original reactant is, the less likely it will be to undergo any reaction in general. All right, more stable compounds are happy the way they are. They're going to be less reactive. All right, and so what we're going to write here is the more stable the compound in general, the less likely it will be for a reaction to happen. So let's look at the stability of our compounds. All right, if you start with this one, right here, our aldehyde, we saw that this H, these H's do not help stabilize that partial positive of a carbon. All right, so this isn't that stable. So it could definitely undergo this hydration reaction. It could happen. But let's look at our others, at our other reactants. These methyl groups are donating groups. They stabilize that partial positive. And so this structure is definitely more stable than that aldehyde. Okay, and let's look at our last one. What are these groups? These are just carbons with three fluorines. It looks a little odd, but if you remember back from Orgo 1 when we talked about ARIO, and, and more specifically, the I for ARIO, induction. When you have halogens, halogens love to pull electrons toward themselves. All right, and so if you think about it, here's our resonance structure. That halogen, and I'll just expand this one, those fluorines, the three on this carbon, and the three over here, would love to pull more electrons toward themselves. And so they'll pull whatever they can from here and from here, which is horrible because we have that plus charge. That sucks. That plus charge already is deficient, and now we're taking even more away. So. We're doing the exact opposite of stabilizing it. We're making this worse. So these are electron withdrawing groups and putting them on our carbonyl is not gonna be as, is gonna be more unstable than a donating group. And the more unstable now a compound is, the more likely it will be to react, okay? And so if you look, this is our most unstable. So it's most likely to react. This is our mo most stable. And so it's less likely to react. All right. Um, and you'll hear that a lot of this in the context of equilibrium, the equilibrium constant. The higher that K value is, that equilibrium constant, the more likely the reaction is going to happen. And so since we said that this reaction right here is the most likely one to happen, this is going to have a very, this reaction will have a high equilibrium constant and a high K value. Okay. And in general, when a reaction happens, when we form a product, right, if that product is more stable than our reactant, the reaction is favored. So now that we removed that carbonyl. We don't have a carbonyl here anymore. There is no partial positive on that. There is no resonance structure where I can get a plus on that carbon. And so it's a much more stable carbon. It's, it's not electron deficient anymore. All right, and so 
this structure, we got rid of that electron deficient carbon, just like we had here. And so this structure is now more stable. And so since this is more stable than the product, sorry, than the reactant, the reaction is likely to occur. All right, and we can examine all three of these the similar way. This structure over here, it's got a partial positive on that carbon. We can draw a resonance structure where there's a plus here, right? And when we look at this, we got rid of that partial positive. So this could maybe happen. This is a little. This could be more stable. But this was pretty stable to begin with. All right, because we had these donating groups stabilizing it. So while this reaction could maybe happen, we have no idea. We know for sure it won't happen as well or as readily as this, because this structure here on the, uh, the reactant is so much more unstable than our product. All right. And so this was just a basic inter introduction to the stability of aldehydes and ketones um, and this hydration mechanism. All right. And so keep this hydration mechanism in mind because it'll be important in the coming videos for another reaction. It's basically going to be this same mechanism almost twice. OK, and so it's a good thing to keep in mind if you understand this one. The next one should hopefully be um, not too much worse. All right, so I hope this video helped you guys, and I will see you in the next one.